Hi, my name is Scott Moore. I'm the owner of Bellevue Fine RV Production. And today we're going to give you some tips and tricks and walk you through how to best photograph your own artwork. Here at Bellevue Fine RV Production, we specialize in the digital capture and reproduction of artwork. And for that, we have a very specialized 4x5 digital scan back camera and a very specialized lighting setup here that we use, along with a very special background. However, you may not have all these tools and yet still want to capture your own artwork as best as you can in order to share with your friends and family, to post on the web, and maybe do some small printing. So let's start with a list of tools that you're going to need in order to photograph your artwork. First, you're going to need a camera. It's best to use a camera with a removable lens. You don't need a super high-end camera, but you do need one with a removable lens and manual settings in order to get a decent photograph of your artwork. A camera like this, that's a small Instamatic, even under the best conditions, still is not going to really give you an adequate photograph of your artwork. This and similar phones or the iPhone are not cameras. Please do not try and use this to photograph your artwork using these techniques. You will not get a good result. Next, you're going to need a tripod. You don't need a large, expensive tripod, but you do need just a simple tripod in order to hold your camera steady and in order to make sure that it's straight and aligned with the wall. Lastly, you need a white card. You need something like this that is white, that is real white, not cream white, not gray, but white in order to white balance your camera before you start shooting. With those three things, plus a couple of lights, you should be able to get a good photograph of your artwork. So once again, you're going to need a camera, a tripod, a white card, and then lights. Okay, now we're going to start setting up and getting ready for the actual photo shoot. First thing that we want to do is pay attention to our lighting. There are a couple different options for lighting. One is to shoot outdoors. If you shoot outdoors, I highly recommend that you wait for a cloudy day. Shooting on a, on a very bright day where you have a lot of sunlight may seem like a good idea, but what you're going to get is a lot of shadow, a lot of hard light. You're probably going to get blown out areas in your painting and ultimately it's not going to look that good. The best results really come from indoor lighting where you have a consistent light source coming from two directions. You want your light source to be at 45 degree angles, if at all possible, from each side of the painting evenly. And you want a nice soft light. If you don't have a professional lighting setup, you can try and find a white umbrella or a white, white sheets or something that's going to soften the light so that you don't have hard shadows falling onto your, to your artwork. So 45 degree angles from both sides, soft light, or outdoors on a cloudy day, once again, very soft light on a cloudy day. And if you do that, you wanna try and shoot at about two o'clock in the afternoon um, where you've got good, good afternoon white light. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your artwork. So when you set up your camera, you want to make sure it's on a tripod and you're going to do everything you can to align that lens parallel with your artwork. So you also want the camera to be here. It's lower for the video shoot. We're going to leave it there. But if I were to shoot this with this camera, I would want this artwork to be in the center of the lens without tilting the lens up or down. You really want a very, very even shot there. This is very, very crucial when you're shooting your artwork. And one of the things that, that we see when people post their artwork on the internet a lot is skewed shots, where people have shot it from a slight angle um, or an extreme angle. So do everything you can to line up your camera there. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to actually set up the camera. Since lighting conditions vary, we're going to set up a white card. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to shoot something white. 
in the camera and we're going to do what's called manual white balance in the camera. Whatever camera you're using uh, will have its own instructions on how to white balance the camera. They're all different, but it's all very, very simple and they're all very similar. Basically, in the camera, you take a picture of something white and then in the settings in the camera, you will go in and you will select that photo that you've just taken as the basis for white balancing the camera and then you'll start your shoot. And that's how the camera knows what real white is. You should still get good consistent color. While we're talking about the white card and white balancing, let's, let's talk a little bit about polarization. This is a circular polarizing filter. And the white card becomes particularly important if you decide to use a polarizing filter uh, while shooting your artwork. Now, why would you use a polarizing filter? The reason you would use a polarizing filter, and we do here, here sometimes when we shoot artwork professionally, is with very uh, reflective surfaces, uh, particularly oil paintings and acrylic paintings that are highly varnished, where you get a lot of, lot of light bouncing back off to shoot your own artwork and looked at it on the computer and seen lots of little white dots where it's bright. That is called spectral highlighting and the polarizing filter can really help get rid of some of that. What you do is you attach the polarizing filter onto your camera and you dial the polarizer and look through the, look through the viewfinder until you see those spots going away and you've got a clean picture without light bouncing off of the painting. That's what you want to do. You want to set it there and then take a picture of your white card and white balance and start shooting. And that can be a very, very helpful tip if you're shooting uh, oil paintings. So, now that we've taken a picture of our white card and we have everything set up just the way we want in the camera, we're ready to shoot our picture here. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to focus, and I'm going to bring that artwork right in to fill the frame. What I want to do is fill the frame with the camera as much as I can in one direction so I can get as many pixels out of this camera as I want. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it at a reasonable f-stop, probably around 5, and I'm going to get my lighting and settings correct so that the camera shows that I've got an even shot, you know, balance, speed, and ISO, etc. You want to shoot, if at all possible, under ISO 400. You have insufficient lighting and, you're, and you need to shoot at ISO 1000 or something crazy like that, you might want to try and get a little bit more lighting on it because uh, you'll get a grainy picture. So in order to get a good, clean, crisp picture that's not grainy, get your ISO down, go ahead, and everything's in focus, everything is set up, click, take the picture. Okay, now that we've captured our artwork we're, and we've got it onto our desktop here, onto our computer, we're going to open up this file and take a look at it. There we go. Now as you can see, a little bit brighter on the left than on the, on the right, um, but we generally have a pretty good picture. One thing you can see is that if you look at the space around the picture on the left and the right, you can see that we captured it as closely as we got it, the painting as close to the edge as we possibly could. So we've got gotten as many pixels as we can out of the picture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop into this. I'm going to crop away the extra area that we don't need. Um, a little bit of space up there at the top. Um, now I'm going to just clone away it. That little black space I've got there, and I'm going to use the clone stamp in Photoshop to take out that magnet I had holding it. And there we are. We have a pretty good capture of our artwork. If I look at image size here, I've got 5,360 pixels wide. That is going to determine how large I can actually print this thing. If I look, for example, at my calculator, I'm just going to use my calculator here. I'm going to look at the image size. I'm going to say 5,630. You want to divide 
your largest pixel, whether it be height or width, you want to divide that by 300. And we see now that we can we can actually print this image 18 inches, 18.7 inches wide at 300 dpi. So we have a good image capture that can be used on the web and can actually be used for printing up to 18 inches wide. As long as we have a nice clean shot, we're happy with the colors. So I think that, that concludes um, our little tips and tricks on how to shoot your own artwork. I, I know there's an awful lot more and I could talk for hours on, on, on the subject, but this should give you a few tips and tricks to get you started um, in shooting your own artwork and displaying it, um, at least on the internet, so it looks a little bit better.